June 23rd, 2012, started like any other day. I'd done many missions just like it, the flight, everything. You know, we go outbound, we go and pick up three Army medics, and we're going to go bring supplies to Ford Operating Base, Nauzad, and we're going to go from Nauzad to Musakela, where some Marines needed air support. And unfortunately, you know, we never made it to Musakela. And I remember with my night vision goggles down, just looking at the ground, I was on left gun, helicopter comes nose up, and starts to roll left. First question people ask me is, what were you thinking? Did you pray? And I just counted. I counted until we hit the ground. My legs had collapsed underneath me, obviously resulting in a left leg above knee amputation. I had spinal cord trauma, had damage to my arms, and I didn't realize the damage done to my face. And I remember like almost being in somebody else's shoes, um, almost outside, like outside looking outside in. Looking at, yeah. And I remember when my gunnery sergeant and my sergeant major walked into this makeshift hospital that we had out in Camp Bastion, and they were both crying, and they just looked at me, and I knew I was going home. I knew it was done. That was the most gut-wrenching thing. It was almost like a survivor's guilt type thing. Like, I, I didn't want yeah. to leave. Like, my, right. I still had two months left of that deployment, and I was supposed to be there with my guys, and my whole world was flipped upside down. I fought for about a year to stay in, and the Marine Corps came back to me and said, you're unfit for duty. And I went into a downward spiral fast. You know, I thought I was, I thought it was all over and I had truly given up. And I remember my dad coming to me, tears in his eyes. And he was like, you've got to be shitting me. You know, the enemy couldn't kill you. Now you're going to do it for them. Like, and that was when my light bulb went off. It was like, wait a second. You know, there is, there is life after service. There is a lot left out there. And, you know, I joined the Marine Corps to serve people. Now was my time to figure out how I was going to continue serving people. Like, what if you can inspire men, women, and children to use more of their potential? That was really the pivotal moment in the recovery because I was like, you know what? You can set new goals. You can. These, these dreams that you used to have, yeah, they might be a little bit different now, but you can still chase after them. I was not doing what I'm doing now on two legs. You know, I'm, I'm right. doing more now that I've been missing my leg, and it's because you, you took it for granted. Like, there's no, nothing easy about what I'm doing anymore. There's no putting one foot in front of the other. There's no rolling out of bed real quick. You know, nothing. But because I lost that, it was like, oh, wait a second. I do still want to run. I, stu I do still want to hike and climb mountains and go fishing and go hunting and do all the things that I could have been doing before. I mean, the outdoors shapes our life from, you know, when we're knee high to a grasshopper, and it should all the way through the rest of our lives because there's so much out there to offer. So when you got into this situation with Adventures Enabled and Wounded Warriors Outdoors, I mean, this just resonates for you, I think. Wounded Warrior Outdoors is 100% volunteer-based nonprofit organization where we take servicemen and women, injured servicemen and women, out on just therapeutic adventures all over the place. And Wounded Warrior Outdoors truly showed me, you know, a new brotherhood. You know, yeah, I was leaving my Marine Corps one, but look at all these people out here that we're like-minded. We have the same sense of humor. We, we can relate to each other with our experiences, and we can actually communicate and make ourselves you know feel maybe a little bit vulnerable to actually heal mentally and emotionally and there's there's a lot going on there and so wounded warrior outdoors really just kind of took hold of me um took a big piece of my heart really quickly uh, matt amos who's actually the co-host of adventures enabled with me you know we sat down and we just had this, I this idea and we sat there and we we're like you know there's a lot of people who are amputees or who have these disabilities or who are you know confined some way shape or form to their their homes and we wanted to be able to distribute something that they could watch from their computer or their TV and be like, you know what, this isn't so bad. I can do more. I can go outside and I, you know, I, I can go adventure. And that's really what the intent behind Adventures Enable is, you know, just to inspire people, not just the veteran community. Yes, we're all vets and we're all rowdy and military, and but it's for everybody. It's really yeah. to show everybody that you can do more. Over the course of this, uh, seemingly enough, never-ending recovery of mine, People came out of the woodworks to help me. And it was people, you know, the people and the experiences that have shaped who I am now. And I want to pay that forward. This isn't about Kirsty getting to the top of the mountains anymore. It's showing people that you can, period. Whatever your figurative or literal summit is, like, get after it. Be better, be faster, be stronger, do more. Like, I can't emphasize that enough for other people. Right. Don't settle. No. And, and definitely don't think that you can't for whatever right. reason because absolutely you can't. If your head and your heart are in the right place, you can do absolutely anything, especially physically. And one of the things that I've really just lived my life by is it's the six inches between your ears and what's behind your rib cage. And that determines what you're capable of.